it out that we, we said to everybody that they weren't allowed to do live demos. <laughs> I don't know whether you didn't get the memo. <laughs> you, you got the memo, but you decided... <laughs> you asked for permission. Did someone give them permission? <laughs> I'm sure uh, thank you so much for that introduction, Ilya. And uh, before I start, I, I, I think what I want to achieve um, through this presentation is to show how Dury products are actually the keystone piece for discovery being much more practical. It's been a valid criticism of, say, Beacon, for example, that we're not disclosing as much information as we can potentially be if we have a secured access. Uh, framework wrapped around it. So what I'd like to do in the next 15 minutes is walk you through a four-year narrative of the story of Beacon in, again, just 15 minutes. So Beacon has come a long way from its initial beginnings. We are now a real-time platform for the discovery of genetic mutations across a global federated network with tiered access to clinical metadata using one account. Um, this has been a journey, and I'm going to walk you through stepwise how we developed this. So Beacon was conceived a little over four years ago at a round table at the first Global Alliance conference. And this is Jim Ostell and, and a bunch of faces we're familiar with still. Um, deciding what is a litmus test for uh, understanding whether international organizations are actually willing to engage in data sharing. And they came up with this very simple, seemingly innocuous start to uh, discovery, which is, uh, I, as a scientist, can ask a beacon, do you have a C at chromosome 13 position X, Y, and Z? And so this is similar to the real life game of GoFish, essentially, for genomic variants. And the data holder, the benefit, is that they don't actually expose anything more than yes or no, at least initially. Okay, so uh, that was proposed in 2014, and, and a few months later, we actually had five beacons, and we thought, wouldn't it be a great testament to interoperability if we can actually search across these simultaneously in real time? So we started to build something we initially called the beacon of beacons. We found out that was too geeky, so we named it the beacon network. And what the beacon network is, is a federated search engine in real time across um, what were initially just a few beacons, but has grown to include now hundreds of public beacons. Okay, so we have a method to, to, to search across a large number of beacons in real time. Uh, we now want to, and as I want to spend the most, most of my time in this talk, um, speaking about how we're planning to make beacons a lot more powerful and starting with the concept of tiered access. So what we'd like to do is to enable progressive disclosure of increasingly detailed and useful clinical metadata along with the beacon response as we gain increasing amount of trust in the individual who's making the query. So in other words, a public beacon can say, yes, I have information about this variant, but only after going through the necessary steps of authentication and authorization will they gain access to the patient's metadata. So this effort has been really championed by, um, by Elixir and the Elixir Beacon Project. Um, they are taking this initiative and, and deploying uh, both public and controlled access beacons right across Europe. There are 15 installations that are collectively serving over 200, 250,000 subjects. Um, so this is actually a, a demo of the Elixir AI, which is, uh, I guess, the the, the identity management console behind uh, what, what Ilya has been showing. Um, so Elixir EAI is, it actually infers institutional affiliations from linked accounts um, to this identity and also supports explicit attestation that, yes, I am a bona fide researcher according to the policies of GA4GH. So you'll get a little check mark on your report card attached to this claim that says, I have in fact attested that I am a bona fide researcher. And that fact can be used to authorize um, requests to the Beacon Network. So here we're showing an example of a, a user logging in after having uh, attested to the bona fide research status, and now I have access to more beacons. Okay, but we still don't have clinical metadata. And what we did actually before we implemented this in the latest version of the API is we asked a lot of questions of our users, and I'm sorry that the numbers are a little bit skewed here, um, but we wanted to understand how people were using beacons. It's actually difficult to understand because most of the beacons at the time were all public. Uh, so we asked the users, what are you actually using beacons for? And it turns out that the large majority are actually looking at this in the context of a clinical use case, either 
clinical research or diagnostic application, and specifically looking in large part for rare, rare variants and variants of unknown significance. Okay, and then we asked, how can we now improve um, your use case? What would make beacons more useful to you? Um, and so very clearly you can see with both of these questions asked basically in different ways um, that, that researchers really want access to case level annotations about individuals. And so we went back to the drawing board and say, how, we, how can we modify the beacon API so that the payload of the beacon response not only includes yes or no, but also useful clinical oriented metadata about that individual. And so we've adjusted in the latest version of the API a metadata construct that allows you to input both structured and custom metadata along with the resource payload, which now allows you to use uh, the beacon for disclosing, say, patient information, phenotypic information, variance annotations, classifications, um, and also pointers to data that can be used in a CloudWorks stream run. So Elixir is now uh, taking the concept of a clinical beacon network, which is going to be a closed, uh, controlled access network of oncology um, throughout Europe. They're installing these in seven different sites across Europe to be deployed in 2019 uh, to, to really accelerate the oncology use case, again, using the oncology payloads associated with the beacon response. So we now have hundreds of beacons that are connected to networks um, serving over 750,000 subjects worldwide and seeing uh, over a million queries. So we now need to think about how this actually scales. So we actually imagine and want to encourage the proliferation of lots of beacons that are both registered and controlled access, each of which has its own authorization controls. And I think we got a taste of, of the complexity of matching data use with research identity and, and brokering access to, to data sets based on complex authorization rules. Um, so I won't go through those two examples, but, but essentially we could imagine a, a, many scenarios where you actually need multiple identities in order to do a federated analysis. So you have hundreds and hundreds of beacons, each of which you need different set of keys to unlock. Okay, so we're closing in along with Dury um, advising us in this direction to, to develop a system for concentration of identity. So instead of having uh, multiple independent keys, we can think about creating a concentrated identity which has within it an aggregate set of the claims that each of the individual identities has. Um, and so along with a federated request to the network, we can also pass this identity, which has a bag of these GA4GH claims from the RI group that will allow uh, a beacon operator to make a more sophisticated uh, 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 understanding of whether they should broker access to that, that beacon or not. Okay, so the last part, of, this is not a real demo, so it does work. Um, it's a pre-recorded one. <laughs> But I wanted to show um, how this concept of identity concentration can be used to broker access to much more sophisticated information in Beacon. So what you just saw before that screen changed was querying the Beacon network as a public user. And it actually prompted you to log in. It said, yes, I have information about it. Please log in here. And so we created something called the Science ID. It's a conceptual identity concentrator that takes claims from multiple identities, groups them into one, and federates that across the network. Um, and we imagine that, that as the, the standards mature in this area, it will be uh, adopted by and, and replaced by services like Elixir. Um, so I don't know if I can pause this video, but very quickly you can see that now that I'm querying the network with my science ID, this aggregate set of claims, it actually contributes back uh, lots of information about this individual. So we now have clinically relevant metadata flowing through a beacon response, as well as a long list of data objects, literally files that you can take and dispatch through something like a, a workflow execution schema presented by David. Okay, so I've talked through how we kind of piece together the worldview that we have now to develop a real-time platform for the discovery of genetic mutations across a global federated network with tiered access to clinical metadata using a single account. Um, again, I think the, the Dury Workstream is, is the fundamental keystone piece in allowing us to converge on more interesting use cases that will enable data to be more findable through search APIs, more accessible through Dury, and more usable through cloud. 
The strategy that we're taking, not only with Beacon, but also across discovery, is to develop a, a more modular framework that will allow us to mix and match these tools. And so we imagine that not only does Beacon require a network of services, but so does uh, Matchmaker Exchange, and so does the emerging search APIs. Um, so this is a, Beacon has, by virtue of being simple, allowed us to go a very long way to develop this ecosystem technology stack where we can now replace more sophisticated search protocols in place of it. Okay, so very quick recent updates. Uh, the Beacon protocol, which is now V1, has been approved by the steering committee uh, as a GA4GH standard. Our paper just last week got accepted for publication in Nature Biotech, and we're working with the partner engagement team to uh, globalize uh, the vision for clinical beacon networks. Um, so with that, I just want to acknowledge everyone who put a lot of hard work into this.